What's poppin'? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika, and with last night's episode of Queen Sugar. Um, uh, the season title, all that'll be somewhere out there in the description box on the title. Yeah, I know how we doing things around here. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, let's get into this. Before I begin, I want to let y'all know, I didn't, I'm doing this off the dome. I have no notes whatsoever. I didn't take any last night because I wasn't feeling well. And I don't have any. So I had nothing to refer to. If I happen to buy some happenstance, leave something out, feel free to uh, put it down in the comments. And, you know, we can continue the discussion down there always. I like, you know, interacting with you guys when you're giving me, you know, something to talk about with you or whatnot. So we're doing that. I'm doing that for two reasons. One, this is a test for me. I um, had a reaction last week to a medication that I have, uh, I've been taking for over a year now, and um, it caused me to have some some uh, some slight memory loss last week, so this is a part of me testing myself to make sure I'm still good, and uh, it just is what it is, y'all let me know if I leave anything out, I'm doing it strictly from memory only. Now, on last night's episode, we tackled the issue of Unbot finding out that she now ha uh, she does have lupus. It's not fibro fibromyalgia, as she had originally stated on an earlier episode. She actually has gone through the ANA testing and all of that, and it's been determined that she has lupus. And they explained it very well last night what lupus is. It's the antibodies that your body builds up to fight off infections. People like myself and the character Miss Vi, uh, we know she ain't got that in real life, Lord, for, Lord forbid, but you know, people with lupus, such as myself, um, it's when your, our bodies build up antibodies that are supposed to be there to help us fight off any form of infection that may enter our bodies. Our bodies build it up so fast that it's looking for something to attack, so it begins to attack, attack our organs, like our heart, our lungs, things like that. Lupus is, it's a lot to deal with. It, it's a lot to deal with. I know firsthand how bad it can actually get, but I count it all joy, y'all, because this life, it's a real life with lupus, you know. I have my days where I don't want to get out to bed and I hurt really bad. But for the most part, I'm, I'm maintaining, you know. I ain't going to tell you that this battle is easy. It's definitely not. But it's doable. You know, it's doable. I've been blessed. That's what I see it as. Every day that I'm able to get up and just get up and know who the hell I am just to get up, period. It's a blessing. And... As she was in the consultation with the doctor, and the doctor was explaining each uh, exactly what the disease is, you saw her somewhat drift off into her own mind, and I can identify with that. I remember the day that I was told that I was going to have a disease that was going to forever affect my life. She thought about everything she intended to do, everything she had going on in her life right then, and how this diagnosis has completely hit her out of nowhere to the point where you don't know whether or not you want to laugh or you want to cry or you just want to just be still. You are actually in a state of shock because... As with this consultation that she had with her doctor when he when she gave her the uh, the diagnosis, you you be pretty much like that, you know, because they are telling you what the hell finna happen to you or what could happen to you, and it's a lot to bear. So I understood her and that mama when she stood there, or well, when she was just sitting there and she was drifting in and out, of, you know, of the conversation that the doctor was having with her. Now. As with lupus, sometimes your intention on Monday can be to do it all. As with on um, buying this episode, she had it in her head that she was going to be able to fix this dinner for um, Darla parents that who's coming in to visit and meet Ralph Angel and Blue probably for the first time. So she, that's her mindset. She's going to do this. Her un, un, 
unfortunately, there are moments where your intentions are pure and good on Monday, but by Tuesday morning, the story has changed. And as we saw in that episode, she had to call Darla and tell her a lie, basically, because she hasn't come out and revealed to the family that she has this disease. She got to first make peace with it her damn self before she could actually bring herself to mutter the word, utter the words out of her mouth that I have lupus. That's not easy to say. So she tells Darla in this episode that she's going to uh, go ahead on and help her pay for a meal from the high yellow. And she gonna bake a pie, because, you know, that's what she do. She make pies. Okay, Darla a little upset about it. You know, you can tell she's a little disappointed. I won't say upset, I'll say disappointed. But she understands, okay, sometimes things just happen. Most of her apprehension is because she is going to have to face her past when her parents come. And that's exactly what we saw. When her parents came to see her, we saw that it was a lot of pain still there, you know. And... I don't know if most of you follow the narrative that I follow. My thought was Darla parents just walked out on her, left her high and dry. She was, a, you know, she got in a, uh, involved in an addiction that wasn't good for her. And, you know, they watched her spiral out of control and they did nothing to help her. However, in this episode, we were led to find out that it's two sides to every story. You know, everybody, everything ain't what it seems. You know, that's what we that's what we learned on this episode because when her parents came, as they sat at the dinner table, it was on by Charlie Nova, Ralph Angel, her parents, darling her parents, and Lil Blue at the table. You could begin to wonder in that moment what all went on to make the father be the way he was, because we saw him big up in Charlie and Nova for what they were doing. They had to actually tell Dad that, hey, you know, Charlie did. If it wasn't for Darla, I couldn't do half of what I've done. You know, she's she's valuable here. But because of what the father had, that feeling of disappointment that he had inside of him, because he knows things that they don't quite know yet, and we found out that they really do, it was hard for him to accept it. Even though Ralph Angel stood in and said, you know, she can teach as well as learn. Because the father said that uh, Darla could learn a lot from Charlie and Nova. Ralph Angel stood in and said that she can learn, a, she can teach a lot, you know. And the father, he's not ready to let go to her. So at this point, we're sitting here and we're thinking, you know, what the hell? Why he treat her like that? He didn't want to acknowledge nothing good about her. Why is he being this way? At this moment, I'm still playing into the narrative that she built up in my head because of the way the storyline was going that her parents just, you know, counted her out. She made a mistake and they cut her out. Not one time that I think that it was another side to that very story, but we learned it in the next episode, I mean, the next scene, because we saw her mom, Darla and her mother sitting out on the porch talking. And we learned that there were many a times the parents were there for her. She would call them high as hell, making promises like crackheads always do, making them people come look for her only to not be able to find her. And they like they live in the next city. These people on the other side of the world. To the point where it got so bad to the point where these people were almost broke. And when they said broke, I can imagine that they meant broke as far as spirit as well as finances. Your spirit breaks. And in order for me to be able to continue to live on, I have to break away and let you find your way. Because I can't keep letting you destroy me with each and every time you make that phone call. So the parents didn't run away from Darla. Darla put them in a situation where it was really a survival thing. It's me and you. I can't let you keep making me your victim. So I understood what the mother was saying when she told us. She said, we were there. We were there for you. Until you did so much that we couldn't be there anymore. And I hope that you ain't totally good people up in here. Anything to the contrary. Because you had a family and a very loving family. Darla felt like her mom didn't believe that she was clean. Her mama said in the past, I didn't believe you was clean because you wasn't. 
But now that I'm standing here looking at you today, I believe you're clean. Now it's time to go and confront Dad. Now, I thought... Child, I hope we ain't finna hear no shit about this man who sexually molested this girl at some point in time. Because everything was so stiff and so tense when the parents got to the uh, farm and stuff. I was like, what the hell? Is there some secret thing going on? Now, I've already understood now where Mama Darla was coming from. See, I got what she was saying. But now we're going to hear Daddy side. And Daddy had a truth. If you truly have accepted everything you've done wrong in your past. If you truly want to make amends with everybody, then you need to live in that truth. And you need to live in that truth starting today. Now, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. I had no idea what daddy was talking about. But we're going to talk about it in a few minutes. Now, let's pause off of the uh, Darla and her family situation for a moment. And let's go over to Charlie and Remy. Because Charlie and Remy... They getting closer to the point where she thinking about breaking him off a little something good. You understand what I'm saying? And it's all set up. We get to the moment in the time she in her black lingerie. She ready to, you know, let herself be dessert, as she said, okay? But then, before he got to give her her moment of glory, we discover we may be on two separate wavelengths right now. He was a bit taken off, uh, taken aback because she didn't want to say or lie, you know, lie and say in that moment that she would want to be with him forever. She ain't saying she ready to hit it and quit it, but she don't know where this is going. She want to take it one day at a time. Now, that wasn't something he necessarily wanted to hear because, see, we all know Remy is set up on let's be a husband and wife and have a cup of cheering type of dude. He a traditional old school type of cat. And that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. However, Remy has had two or three years to get over the death of his wife, okay? Charlie just now. Got her divorce papers. She just now got her freedom papers. And then when you first get your freedom papers, you need a moment to woosah. You need a moment to reconnect with you. You gotta you gotta take a moment to grieve that death because that in essentially is what a divorce is. It's a death because you are now breaking apart of family. And most times when they break apart, they don't come back together again. So we are saying that she has to mourn what she been through. Now, I don't feel that that means she ain't going to ever want to be with him like that. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he has to understand, and he did eventually, that it's going to take her a minute. When his wife first died, he didn't immediately jump into another long-term relationship, even though that's the type of guy that he is. I feel like Charlie is a long-term relationship type of woman. However, she's just not coming out of a situation where she was married to this man, his his backbone, his you know his background to uh his foreground, if you will. So with that. She needs time to get to where Remy is at. It's a time thing we're working with, you know. And I'm glad that he got to understand that. Now, she did miss out on getting her boss treated real good. And I know she hot because we ain't seen her with nobody since she left uh, 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 Davis' ass, okay. But, you know, hopefully he'll go on and break her off in this season because ain't no sense in nothing. I mean, I don't see the girl is just leaving your ass alone. She just saying that she don't want to put no actions into words right now. Let it free flow. And then we might even get to the end and it be what we both want it to be, okay. That's what I got from that. Now, Nova. I had almost got mad with Nova. I had almost got fucking mad with Nova ass. Yes, I did, honey. Because I thought Nova was about to backpedal and fuck the pussy pop. I was mad. I said, girl, your ass ain't like you can't. Every time something good come along, you act like you running scared and shit. But then as this episode went on and I began to see what was going on here with her, I had to rethink my situation. I feel like the reason why I'm not counting Robert out yet. I ain't going to count him out because they really are on the same wavelength. But she has to free herself. Y'all probably don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, let's break this shit down. 
when she was with that white man, Calvin, the policeman. That was new. That was exciting. And she really did love this man. However, neither one of them could ever be what they needed to be for each other to be happy and be together. She spoke of that on this episode when she told him, I'm your freedom, but you're my prison. Nova is an activist. And she's an activist for her own people. He don't know nothing about that struggle. He may empathize with it. He might even find some sympathy sometimes. But you can't truly understand where she's coming from and the depth of her passion if you have not or cannot identify with the life she has led. That's what I took from that. And I understand in order for her to be free, part of her liberation was ending it with him because if you go back we never saw them break up we just saw them get back together and go to a diner and she got disrespected i believe somebody spit on her one of his uh his colleagues on the force if i'm not mistaken i think that's what happened when we came back from this for this season here we had no mention of him really so i think she had to have closure with him because he was an integral part of her life but he could, he's like, uh, y'all know how I always say, y'all, some people come for a season, some people come for a lifetime. That's what I took it as. He was a season in her life that she had to end that season in order for a new season to come about. Maybe we, hopefully, she'll find herself back with Robert. I would love to see her back with Dr. DuBois. I do, I need her to get back with that man. They look good together. That melanin on melanin is a beautiful thing, honey. Ooh, I wanted to see it happen. So, as painful as it may have been for her to close that door, she had to close that door because she know that door can never fully open properly. That's what I got out of that. I'm thinking. Well, shit, that's all. Okay, let's go back to Darla and her parents thing. I think I, I hit everything. When she had that conversation with her father, it led her to have to go talk to Ralph Angel because it was time to come clean completely. And what we learned in that scene was that once upon a time when they first got together, she decided to go back home and she got high off some real drugs this time, much harder stuff. And she ended up sleeping with someone else. And that someone else could possibly be the father of Blue and not Ralph Angel. And it broke my heart to see how that broke that man inside. People always say love will conquer all. Oh, no, love will always conquer everything else, baby. It don't. It's going to be interesting to see how they work through this, if they are able to work through this. Because although I believe in love and I think love will conquer a lot of things, there are certain situations and things that happen in life that I don't think that, you know, love alone will be able to, to see you through it, okay? And... That was a good episode last night. I came face to face with a lot of things about myself, you know, as well as having to, I already, lupus is something I live with. So it's not hard. It's not hard at all for me to deal with it. Uh, it's not hard for me to accept it. I've been, if I, if I had to accept it a long time ago, y'all. I fought it for a few years and I almost wound up killing myself. But when I finally accepted what it was, I, I accepted it. And it's going to be interesting to see how Vi's character begins to accept it and learn to live anew. Because your life don't have to stop with this. I mean, I don't know. There are several forms of it. I have one of the worst forms that there is, but I'm still here today. And I count it all joy, child. I count it all joy. But it's going to be interesting to see how this character learns how to cope. Because that's what we're doing every day. We're coping. You know? And I learned to be grateful for the cope, bitch. I don't know what the other side like. And I ain't certain that my good outweigh my bad. I just pray and do better each and every day. But that was it, y'all. That's all I had to say about uh, this this week's episode of Queen Sugar. Um, thank you to my sister from Chicago who hit me up and told me to go over and watch James Colwell's video. Um, I appreciate that. That that's that that meant a lot. You know, it did. I appreciate that. That just goes to show you that you know 
it's some good peoples out here, even though sometimes they do some silly shit. But at the end of the day, he know the struggle that I've had, and I appreciate the fact that he spoke like a, a real gentleman about the situation. And um, I appreciate him appreciating how hard it is to struggle and, you know, shouting me out and uh, giving me the, the words of encouragement that he did. I appreciate that. But that's it, y'all. If I left anything out, please put it down in the panic section. Please remember the death of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video wherever it is you share videos. And I'll see you guys back for the next video. Peace.